principal on behalf of the high school staff I would like to welcome you to tonight's ceremony please if you have not yet turned off your cellular phone please do so now please turn off your phone if you have one so it does not go off during the ceremony thank you please stand
distinguished guests, parents, staff, and most importantly, the graduating students. Welcome to the 1998 commencement exercises of Colegio Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This is a proud moment for all of us, and it is special that we are celebrating it as a school community. Our graduates are the manifestation of what we say that Colegio Roosevelt is here to accomplish. How these graduates conduct themselves and what they do with their lives tells us a great deal about how we are doing our jobs. Let me continue. How these graduates conduct themselves and what they do with their lives tells us a great deal about how we are doing our jobs. Based on what I have observed in my relatively short time in Lima, I feel confident that Roosevelt will be well represented by the 1998 class. From drama to athletics, to technology to music, to debate to the community service, to classroom performance, to publications, and to being excellent examples of what we want future citizens of this world to be, Roosevelt is fortunate to have this group as its 1998 graduating class. I have known you all for a short period of time, but I am most impressed with what I have observed, and I anticipate that we shall hear many good things about what you will accomplish in the future. Part of the mission of Colegio Roosevelt is to prepare you for a world that is rapidly changing. The future is certainly an unknown one. Futurists tell us that most of you, at some point in your careers, will be involved in occupations that do not even exist today, and that most of you will change occupations at least six times. The uncertainty of the future and the rate at which change will take place presents a challenge for you. If Colegio Roosevelt has done what it is supposed to do, then you should be prepared for what awaits you. Hopefully, you will leave us with the ability to think for yourself, to analyze decisions and make your, to analyze situations and make your own well-informed, independent decisions. You will have a compassion to help your fellow human beings. You will understand the value of education and will transmit that value to your own children. You will come to understand that in many cases, your parents have made significant sacrifices to send you to Colegio Ruzio. And maybe, just maybe, you will come to understand that your parents and your teachers and other adults in your lives generally care for you and have made decisions that they think will serve you well in your future. Some of you began your schooling at Roosevelt in kindergarten or maybe even earlier in the early child program. For most of you, your formal schooling began in 1985 when you joined a, when you joined a kindergarten somewhere. While the past 13 years represent a significant part of your lifetime, they are a mere blip on the radar screen of history and just a little larger blip on the radar screen of the lives of some of us adults. However, it may be interesting to pause for a moment to note some of the significant events of the year 1985. It may help us to understand that change really is rapid and that events and people that seem so important at one point in time can quickly be forgotten and be replaced by others. For example, how many of us remember that 1985 was the year in which Alan Garcia, at age 36, was elected president of Peru to become the youngest head of state in the world. That Steve Cram set a new world record in the mile. That the USA became a debtor nation for the first time since 1914. That a new Coca-Cola was introduced, only to be replaced by Coke Classic a very short time later. That Mikhail Gorbachev became the new leader of the Soviet Union. He is no longer the leader and the Soviet Union no longer exists. The Bhopal gas disaster in India. That Martina Navratilova became the first woman to win four straight Wimbledon titles. 
that Bob Geldof launched Live Aid concerts for famine relief in Africa and raised more than $50 million. That Mexico City was ravaged by an earthquake registering 7.8 on the Richter scale, and that nine days later, Charles Richter, for whom the scale is named, died at the age of 85. That divers found the Titanic, which had been in over 12,000 feet of water for 73 years. Little did we know then what would happen with that Titanic theme 13 years later. That E.B. White, author of the book Charlotte's Web, which many of you have read, died at age 86. That heavy fires ravaged the Galapagos Islands. That the Grammy Award for Song of the Year went to We Are the World, and the Oscar winner for the best movie of the year went to Out of Africa. And perhaps one of the few lasting figures connected with important events of the year was Pope John Paul II, who visited Peru in 1985. These are only a few of the things that occurred in the year that most of you started kindergarten. Since that time, there have been changes in our lives that no one could have possibly predicted. And many of the events that made headlines in 1985 have long been forgotten. While one is reluctant to give advice to others, let me leave you with one thing. Change is constant, and many things and many people will come and go in your lives. The one thing that each of you can control and keep from changing is a belief in yourself and in your core values. Keeping those as the foundation of your decision making will enable you to control your own destiny and help you to determine your own future. We are grateful to you for the many contributions to Roosevelt and for the legacy you leave. The class of 1998 has every reason to feel very proud of the record it has achieved. Best wishes for a very prosperous and happy future. Thank you. Buenas noches a todos. Quisiera empezar por agradecerle a mi clase el haber pensado en mí para decir unas palabras esta noche. Palabras como emoción y nerviosismo quedan cortas para explicar lo que los 86 jóvenes que ustedes ven aquí delante sentimos. Nuestros corazones están rebosantes de sentimientos encontrados que no son difíciles de explicar. A todos nos parece increíble que este día tan lejano hasta hace algunos meses haya llegado finalmente. Por un lado, nuestros deseos personales de superación y de autorrealización nos han hecho soñar con esta graduación y como todo joven tenemos innumerables proyectos, ambiciones y sueños que queremos llegar a realizar. Somos conscientes de que vamos a iniciar una nueva etapa en nuestras vidas llena de responsabilidades y probablemente en un ambiente diferente, lo cual nos causa gran curiosidad y expectativa. Al mismo tiempo, nos llena una sensación de nostalgia por todos los recuerdos y vivencias que vamos a dejar atrás. La mayoría de nosotros hemos pasado más de la mitad de nuestras vidas en este colegio. Por lo tanto, hemos jugado, llorado y reído juntos durante muchos años. Y sin darnos cuenta, hemos crecido. Y aunque nosotros no lo hayamos notado, hay personas que sí nos vieron crecer y cambiar. Personas tan importantes para nosotros como los profesores, quienes no solo nos educaron, sino que dedicaron su tiempo y esfuerzo para formarnos, lo cual va más allá de adquirir simples conocimientos. Y de esa manera es como se convirtieron en nuestros amigos. Puede sonar como una locura el hecho de que la mayoría de nosotros estemos juntos desde los cuatro o cinco años y que en los últimos dos es cuando más nos hemos unido como clase. A medida que hemos ido madurando, hemos aprendido de nosotros mismos y de las personas a nuestro alrededor, entre ellas a ser tolerantes, a respetarnos, a trabajar juntos y a valorar lazos tan importantes como los de la amistad. Al mismo tiempo, 
han surgido experiencias que nos han marcado como clase y como individuos. Y es así como, como hemos aprendido a apreciar y a querer a nuestra promoción. Es difícil tratar de definir la personalidad de nuestra clase, porque sería encasillarla en uno o dos términos ya gastados. Cada uno ha venido aportando sus virtudes y sus defectos a través de los años para darle un carácter único. La diversidad y la autenticidad de nuestra clase es lo que hace que todos nos sintamos orgullosos de ella. ¿Quién no escuchó alguna vez que el colegio es la mejor etapa de nuestras vidas y que debíamos disfrutarla al máximo? Y es ahora que nos graduamos cuando comprendemos las razones de esas sabias palabras. Probablemente muchos de nosotros no nos volveremos a ver en varios años y otros sí podremos mantenernos en contacto. Pero nunca nos olvidaremos de cuando jugábamos policías y ladrones en primaria, de las fiestas en la casa de Angie, en la casa de Henry, del viaje al Cusco, de ICC, ni de todo lo vivido y lo aprendido. Y estoy segura de que si en algún momento uno de nosotros necesitara de un amigo o una sencilla frase de aliento, otros 85 estaremos dispuestos de manera sincera y fraterna. Porque a las verdaderas amistades no les afecta ni el tiempo ni la distancia, sino más bien las fortalece. Finalmente, quisiera brindar un reconocimiento a la labor imprescindible, sacrificada y ahora gratificantemente recompensada de nuestros padres, quienes hoy ven en nosotros el fruto de su esfuerzo. Y a mi clase de toda la vida, Gracias por estos maravillosos 14 años compartidos y muy buena suerte a todos. At this time it's my pleasure to award and announce the salutatorian for the graduating class of 1998. Salutatorian for this class, Miss Jennifer Martin. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, classmates. The speakers that have preceded me and the ones that will follow are all here for one purpose to in some way or another explain, analyze, summarize, and add their thoughts to this graduation experience. For diverse reasons, we have been selected to stand here and add a personal touch, perhaps a few anecdotes, a joke or two. As I see it, there are basically two ways in which graduates look at this moment in their life. The first way is to think, thank God it's finally over. Some of us will grab that diploma, wave it in our parents' faces, relief that we finally got it over with, and we can move on to do what we want, whatever that is. There are others who will look at it as a nostalgic moment where friendships and the bonds we form in school come to an end. We will cry, remember. Cry again, look at the senior video 51 times and cry some more. We will miss a lockers, the sight of a chalkboard, and some of us, the really melancholic ones, may even miss the work. Nevertheless, we all agree that however you approach this moment, it has come and we must deal with it to move on. I read a poem by William Blake this past Sunday, which I think may apply here. It's only four lines, so I will indulge myself by reading it to you. It's called Eternity. He who binds, him, binds to himself a joy does the winged life destroy. But he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. It's about enjoying a joyous moment without dwelling on it. Because even on dwelling on joy, we are wasting perhaps the time we have to experience the world. Graduation is one such moment. In the ceremony, we kiss it in different ways. We take time to talk about it, sing about it, and look at a video about it. And then what happens? I tell you to let the moment fly away, tuck it away and remember it, cherish it, but off, above all, now we can move on. This is our chance to fly away. We're finally able to stand at that fork on the road, which Robert Forrest talked about, and I have two roads to choose from, but many, thousands, 
we can create our own road, mold a path that will take us where we want to be, wherever that may be to each of us individually. Whether you start a band, write a book, manage a multi-million dollar enterprise, or launch your own movie production company. Above all, we must experience every moment in our life like we do this one. Kiss it while it flies away. Thank you. Valedictorian of the class of 1998, Miss Sylvia Sanchez. Essentially, ceremonies are a brief moment of suspension which make us grow aware of what was and what will be. It is a specific point on a line where all the points join. That is why it's so difficult to englobe these past four years of school with personal reflections. In any case, I would leave someone or someone or something worth remembering without mention. I believe the most proper, merited, and fair speech is thank you, with capital letters, to all those who helped us wear today the cap and the gown. In name of the class, I would like to thank the school staff especially Mrs. Mendoza, Mr. Acuna, Mr. Kotner, Mrs. Marietta, and Mr. Kornuber, as well as Mr. Mitchell and Ms. Hall for having sponsored our class this last year. Personally, I would like to thank my family, Leilani Hall, Ms. Raez, and Ms. Paz, and of course, Krusty. Thank you all for everything. Gentlemen, fellow classmates, the time has come to present the much awaited senior video. In the next few minutes, you will witness our wholehearted intent to compile 14 years of precious memories. It has, not, it has not been easy, however, to summarize this important part of our life at Colegio Roosevelt in only 10 minutes of video. The task has been even more complicating, consider, considering that many of our classmates have come and gone throughout the time that we have been together. Therefore, we would like to dedicate the senior class video to all the members of the class of 1998, including those which will not be here with us today and those which are watching us from the audience. We urge all of you to not only cherish the moments pictured in this video, but all of those which we spent together and which has made us proud members of the class of 1998. Thank you. Señores, señores y compañeros de la clase de 1998, ha llegado el momento de presentar el tan esperado Senior Video. En los próximos minutos, ustedes serán testigos de nuestro intento de recopilar 14 años de, preci de preciadas memorias. No ha sido fácil, sin embargo, resumir esta importante etapa de nuestras vidas en solo 10 minutos. Esta tarea ha sido aún más difícil considerando que muchos de nuestros compañeros han ido y venido durante este tiempo. Por lo tanto, quisiéramos dedicar este video a todos los miembros de la clase de 1998, incluyendo a aquellos que hoy no han podido estar aquí con nosotros y a los que nos ven desde la audiencia. Les pedimos a todos que no solo recuerden los momentos presentados en el video, pero todos los que hemos pasado juntos y que nos han hecho miembros orgullosos de la clase de 1998. La clase de 1998 quisiera agradecer a aquellos que colaboraron con la producción de este video. El señor Karel y la señora Estela Hartinger, la Miss Alejandra Checa y Juan Pablo Moncada. Muchas gracias por toda su ayuda. Ahora, la presentación del video de la clase de 1998. We the class of 98 would like to give a special recognition to those who assisted in, make, in the making of this video. Mr. Karel and Mrs. Stella Hartinger, Ms. Alejandra Checa, 
Juan Pablo Moncada. Thank you very much for all your help. And now, here is a senior video presentation. This time, we'd like to recognize students who received academic awards. We had our award presentation on Wednesday, and we'll recognize now the seniors who received awards at that time. I ask you please to wait. I'll have all the students who received awards stand, and then if we could give them a nice, nice round of applause as a group. First of all, receiving the Senior English Award, Jorge Pesquera. Senior Math Award, Andrew Romero Wolf. Stay standing, Jorge, please. Thank you. Senior Science Award, John Park, Ricardo Jimenez Kimball. Senior Social Studies, Jennifer Yee. Jerry Lagasse IB Social Studies Award, Jennifer Morton. Senior Spanish Award, Lillian Valcarcel. Senior Spanish as a Second Language Award, Ricardo Jimenez Kimball. Senior Computer and Information Technology Award, Einar Rivera. Outstanding Male Athlete, Fabio Seminario. Journalism, Irene Arce. Yearbook Award, Catherine Akers. Outstanding Artist, John Park. Outstanding Senior Artist, Mary Thorndike. Outstanding Senior Musician, Joel Nunez. Senior Drama Award, Jeffrey Moody. Student Government Award, Luis Javier Montero. Citizenship Award, Juan Pablo Mancada. Community Service Award, Karen Earlham. Congratulations to all of these award winners. three very special awards that are awarded during the ceremony. The first of those is an award given annually for promotion of understanding and relations between the people of Peru and the United States. To present the award tonight, I would like to introduce the Honorable Dennis Jett, Ambassador from the United States of America to the country of Peru. Mr. Jett. Thank you, Brian. Before I present the award, if you'll per permit me one moment of reminiscing, I couldn't uh, help but look at this group and think that it was only 35 years ago that I was with my high school graduating class. It was about the same size, uh, a little over 100. Among that group, people went on to be lawyers, doctors, dentists, real estate agents, housewives, and a number went on to be military officers. Four of us went to service academies, one to West Point, and became a pilot. We always thought he was kind of a nerd, actually, but uh, he was a good student and a good pilot. And he flew not only airplanes, but he wound up flying the shuttle. And I think he demonstrates, and even more so, Carlos Noriega, the Peruvian-born astronaut who visited here last year, uh, both demonstrate that today, for the class of 98, and for, for the, the youth of the United States and Peru, that not even the sky is the limit. So if I have one piece of advice to offer this class, I'd say set your goals high and do your best to achieve them. With that, I'd like to present the award for promotion of understanding and relations between the people of Peru and the United States. All of us have a specific nationality, but this student is truly a citizen of the world. He's demonstrated this through his open-mindedness, his attitude towards others, no matter what race, sex, or nationality, his warmth in dealing with peers, teachers, and administrators, and his way of making the best out of the most difficult situations. It's a great pleasure and an honor for me to give this year's award for promotion of understanding and relations between the people of Peru and the United States to Ricardo Jimenez Kimball.
being an American school in a Spanish-speaking country, obviously language is an important concern and something to deal with constantly. The second special award is the Senior Bilingual Award. For this, I would like to introduce Dr. Marila Reyes, the head of our Spanish department, and Mrs. Patricia Martinez, our IB coordinator, to make the presentation. The student selected for the bilingual award is singled out from the many talented writers of this graduating class because of the unique nature of this award. The recipient must show the ability to move back and forth between two languages with such ease that the movement is hardly noticeable. This is especially difficult to achieve in writing when you have to dominate two languages with their peculiar quirks, rules, and idiosyncrasies. We have the power to turn our words into dust or magic, but what makes this student special is the ability to consistently create magic with so little effort and so much grace. Every time I thought her writing could certainly not leave me breathless again, I was wrong. El premio es para una alumna polémica como Simone de Beauvoir, personal como Margaret Dura. Feminista y femenina como Marcela Serrano, lírica como Herbela Mistral y Blanca Varela. It is with much pleasure and admiration that we present the Senior Bilingual Award to Silvia, Silvia Sanchez. Sanchez. Flowers are special. The final award is the Outstanding Senior Award. We invite tonight the uh, President of the Padres Association, Mr. Rodrigo Acampo, to present this award to the Outstanding Seniors. Before I present the award, which is a dual award because it's being given to uh, two students simultaneously, uh, I'd like to share something uh, with you. All of your children that are up here receiving uh, their graduation have put a lot of hard work into it. And this hard work is something that deserves not only Everything we do as parents normally to send our children to a place like Roosevelt. But permit me to say, I think a little something extra. Personally, I've had the great opportunity over the last year to become very much more involved with the Roosevelt community as the president of the Padre Association. And I had no idea when I got into it what a black hole of time it was going to be. I am very happy when I look back on that time because it has given me a tremendous feeling of belonging in this community and has permitted me to see how excellent the school goes about forming the individuals that you have before you. Now, of course, all of you have children that are now graduating and leaving Roosevelt, but I hope most of you also have younger children that are going to continue here. And to all of you in that second category, I want to ask you to give yourselves the opportunity, black hole though it may be, to dive into the community like I have. Believe me, the experience is well worth the investment in time. Now I'll make the uh, presentations. The first recipient 
is a student who has consistently demonstrated strong leadership qualities within all of the organizations he has been involved in here at Colegio Roosevelt. And personally, I might add, I have seen him uh, in his activities uh, related to the board and uh, extraordinary his uh, level of understanding and maturity in that role. His character is impeachable. He is honest, humble, and possesses, possesses a sense of humor that is highly contagious. He is admired by both his peers as well as the faculty. He has, through his work in student government and the Model UN, been a bridge of understanding for students from all cultural backgrounds. For his substantial contribution to this school, it is with great pleasure that I present the Outstanding Senior Class Award to Luis Javier Montero. The second recipient of the Outstanding Senior Award is a student who is known for her warmth, sincerity, and outstanding academic achievements. As with Luis Javier, this student has been involved in a variety of activities here at Colegio Russo. She too has been a bridge builder between a diverse community of students within her class. Through her work and interaction with the community here at Roosevelt, she too has demonstrated strong moral attributes. Her smile is truly genuine, and compassion and kindness are known to all. For her outstanding contribution to this school, it is with great pleasure that I present the Outstanding Senior Class Award to Almudena Fernandez. gentlemen, distinguished guests, and most importantly, members of the class of 98. When I was honored by the request that I address the 86 individuals graduating on this stage tonight, I was concerned that I had accepted a rather daunting task. I wondered, how could I adequately speak in generalities about such a group with such diverse qualities? Each of these students, in his or her own way, has left lasting impressions with me. They have collectively taught me a great deal about Peru, Colegio Roosevelt, and themselves. Our lives became inextricably joined when, we, when, they, when they walked into my history class as 11th graders. I am certain that many of them have not forgotten those early days as they confronted this North American teacher. In truth, I certainly entertained a sense that things would be different in Peru than in places I previously taught. But I had a very strong conviction that I needed to teach each of them how to understand the world. The world as I knew it. This, of course, would lead to sustained discussions and, at times, heated arguments on such provocative topics as racism, cultural imperialism, classism, and social injustice. Often I would go home and contemplate the discussions we had, and from many hours of reflection, I thought I understood them. This was terribly foolish and naive. Gradually, I began to reevaluate this assumption. What these students were telling me over and over was rather simple. Don't try and define us. Let us define ourselves. Listen to us and you will learn to understand us. Well, indeed, it took time. But gradually, they helped me to understand how they do define themselves. Each is a unique, multi-talented person 
Many are extraordinarily sophisticated. Those of you who have witnessed the art exhibits, the physics projects, the athletic games, or any of the innumerable activities these students have participated in over the years, understands how truly talented these students are. They are all to be congratulated. Now, however, begins the next transition in their lives. Soon, they will enter colleges and universities here and abroad. Many from this class have earned acceptances into world-renowned institutions. But wherever each student finds him or herself, they will once again begin the process of defining themselves, but now as men and women. Their education at these institutions will only prepare them to an extent to enter the university of life. Billions of people today have already graduated from this university in which the curriculum is the day-to-day -day struggle for survival. Ultimately, each of you, too, will enter the university of life. And although you may have earned your degrees and have been awarded great honors, your knowledge will be imperfect. And yet, you may go on to be quite famous. You may enjoy fabulous wealth and all the pleasures and comforts the world has to offer. However, the demands of the University of Life are far more comprehensive and enduring than those of the most rigorous academic university. It will extract a greater toll from you. However, if if you have learned to forgive a little more, if you have learned to tolerate a little more, if you have learned to strive for justice a little more, if you have learned to give comfort a little more, and most importantly, if you have learned to love a little more, you will have gone a long way. Finally, I exhort you to heed the following words of wisdom taken from Corinthians 1, chapter 13. When I was a child, I used to talk like a child and think like a child and argue like a child, but now I am a man. All childish ways are put behind me. Now we are seeing a dim reflection in a mirror, but then we shall be seeing face to face. The knowledge that I have now is imperfect, but then I shall know as fully as I am known. In short, there are three great things at last, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. God bless all of you. Thank you. Now the class gift. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the class of 98, struggled endlessly to come up with the perfect gift. We decided to go beyond the Roosevelt community and provide aid to those in need. We are donating from class funds $200 to community service. If Mr. Alan Pankoff could please come up to uh, the podium to receive the gift. Today is a celebration, a celebration of the students' successful completion of high school, 
a celebration of their admittance to outstanding universities in the United States, in Peru, and other parts of the world. A celebration of their hard work, their special talents, and their thoughtful contributions to their classmates and to the school. A celebration of an important transition in their lives. When I was invited by the graduation committee to participate in this ceremony by giving the speech of appreciation, I thought to myself, what an honor it is for me to be part of this special moment in their lives. Because you see, by a peculiar twist of fate, I had had the privilege of welcoming many of today's graduates into Roosevelt. I was their transitional kindergarten teacher way back in the year 1984-85. Now, almost 14 years later, the cycle is completed for me as I stand before them and their classmates to say farewell. This was always a special class for me. Together, we initiated a journey of discovery. We laughed a lot. We played hard. We danced the hokey pokey. We did somersaults together. We sang and dramatized nursery rhymes. We painted pictures with big, bold colors and bright stripes. We sat in a circle one day and held hands around the tree and flowers that we planted for a classmate who had died. This class has a very special place in my heart. And this is a time of transition for them. As they complete this phase of their lives, it's important to take a moment to reflect, to look back, and give thanks to the many people who made their successes possible. Obviously, the students themselves deserve considerable credit for their accomplishments. They are ultimately the ones who are responsible for the results they achieve. Their teachers also deserve our gratitude for providing, excuse me, the intellectual challenges, for setting high standards and expecting only the best, for their loving guidance throughout the students' years at Roosevelt. But there are others who deserve our gratitude and appreciation, people whose wisdom and love contributed profoundly to their becoming the fine young men and women who are graduating today. You, the parents. Parents, you did it. You chose Roosevelt because you believed it to be the best. You entrusted your children to us. You made sacrifices to keep your children at this school. You helped them memorize spelling words and multiplication tables. You stayed awake nights when they had fevers. You provided nutritious lunches for them, which they sometimes traded for a bag of potato chips and a candy bar. You helped them construct models of pyramids, machines, native villages, molecules. You accompanied the classes on innumerable field trips to museums, farms, archaeological sites, factories. You made dozens and dozens of cupcakes and cookies for them to sell so they could raise funds for their class. You helped organize and chaperone rec nights, carnivals, proms, class parties, sports days, contributing in this way to the bright memories your children will carry with them forever. You shared their joys, and their sorrows. You celebrated each step of your children's journey. You believed in your children. You believed in the school. You gave unflinchingly of your time, your ability, and efforts to the board, to the parents' association, and to countless committees 
to guarantee that Roosevelt stayed number one. By putting education at the top of your list of priorities for your children, you gave them the most precious of gifts, the tools and knowledge which, which prepare them to be self-sufficient, thinking, productive citizens in this world. You are to be praised for giving your children the very best that you could give them. You are the first and the most important educators your children will ever have, and you will continue educating them for the rest of your lives. Your children have become what they are today, and our school has become what it is because of your generous contributions. Colegio Roosevelt thanks you today. Parents, you did it. Thank you. Mrs. Mulder, members of the Board of Directors, the students before you have met the requirements for graduation. Will the class advisor please read the roll call of graduates? I am proud to call the roll for the class of 1998. Jung Ni Lee. Patricia Syra. Suki Tomita <laughs> Young G Moon <laughs> Ada Rivera <laughs> Fabio Seminario <laughs> Pedro Kruger Miguel Espinoza. Joel Nunez. Parents of graduating seniors who serve on the Board of Directors and the Instituto Educacional Franklin D. Roosevelt are invited to present the diploma to their student during commencement. Would Mrs. Diane Riadegui please come to the stage? Ricardo Isquera Christopher Lurie Irene Arce yeah. 
Silvia Sanchez. Lillian Balcarcel. Katie Marcus. Juan Francisco Mancilla. Camilio Caballero. Would Mr. Alphonse Lopez please come to the stage? Krister Lopez. Jorge Gamusio. Sebastian Muñez. Eduardo Thrun. <laughs> Carlos Nino Niera. <laughs> Fernando Ezeta. <laughs> Tommy Yo. Umberto Medrano. Jose Luis Martello. Fernando Galeno. Jose Luis Gamboa. <laughs> Stella Hardinger. <laughs> John Park. <laughs> Andrew Romero Wolf. Grisales, <laughs> Yoon Choi, <laughs> Sergio Fernandez, <laughs> Abel Alvarez Calderon. Michelle Tube, <laughs> Min Chang, <laughs> Macarena Tapa, <laughs> Grace Hoyle, Maria Isabel Mendoza. <laughs> Anna Teresa Harmson. Lorena Rossell. <laughs> J. 
Jordi Piera. Carolina de Noriega. Jason Uman. Jorge Holtz. Paula Franco. Marion Benavides. Amparo Achoa. Rita Valencia. Jennifer Yi. Karen Erlam. Gonzalo Fosa. Juan Pablo Moncada. Gonzalo Elias. <laughs> Melissa Waco. <laughs> Jose Luis Piscoya. Luis Magluf. Cesar Fejaji. Renata de Bajos. Cuelo. <laughs> Marina Fejeda. <laughs> Belisario de las Casas. <laughs> Felipe Thorndike. Javier Montero. <laughs> Ricardo Jimenez Kimbo. <laughs> Jessica Guevara. Angelina Mufaric. Maritzel Thorndike. Almudena Fernandez. Quadros. <laughs> Sal 
Salvador Magluf. Luis Miguel Nevera. Jaime Fernandez. Jeffrey Moody. Adrian Lizette Yehi. Julie McCall. Would Mr. Steve Akers please come to the stage? <laughs> Catherine Akers. <laughs> Henry Naraki. Patricia Pandolfi. Rosa Maria Castillo. Jorge Luis Izquierda. Jennifer Morton. Graduation class of 1998. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduates of 1998.
gentlemen and fellow classmates. It is time to thank a person which has given us his love and his appreciation. Mr. Weinrich, thank you. Thank you for this group of young men and women that have reached this first step in their professional lives. We embrace the feelings of their parents and relatives and from the depths of our hearts we lift to you a prayer of thanksgiving. We also ask you to have mercy upon them. We intercede in their behalf for their young lives. Look upon them, Lord. They lack the expertise of an adult. We ask that they might understand the need of you in this new phase of their lives. That they, like King Solomon, would draw close to you and say, Dear God, you have made me King of Israel, but I am young and need wisdom to rule this nation. Today, in humbleness before your presence, with a sincere and willing heart, may these young people recognize that they have a strength, but lack experience, that they have boldness, but need patience, that they have a beauty, but they need humility, that although they have enjoyed economical resources, they need to build their own secure future, that they have modern technology within their vision, but need to remember that you are the Almighty Creator, that although they, or they have shown in acquiring this degree is significant, they must now strive with all of their courage to become not only professionals, but mature men and women. That they need their wisdom to choose a suitable mate so that their marriages will not founder and their children men and women in the company of both parents. May these youth good professionals, good citizens, good parents, good managers, and good public servants. May they be defenders of democracy, freedom, human rights, and the environment which is your creation. Lastly, Lord, may these young men and women be grateful May they be grateful to their parents and to their teachers who for years have invested themselves in these young people to provide valuable legacy for them to enjoy. Above all, Father, may they be grateful to you in your precious 